Hey, welcome back to the next lesson on how to use the cross-platform native plugins to package inside of Unity. For this lesson, I'll show you how to use the cloud services to save and retrieve player data from the cloud. Now this video and series is officially sponsored by Voxel Busters, who are the developers of the cross-platform native plugins. So make sure that you check out their content by going to voxelbusters.com. Now before I begin, make sure that you're subscribed to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. In the overview section of cloud services, it explains that cloud services is useful when you want your user's data to persist across devices. It also tells us that on iOS, it uses the iCloud service, and on Android, it uses the Save Games feature of Google Play services. In the Use Cases section, it gives us two examples of what cloud saving is good for. The first example is that you can save your player's progress, whether that's related to the player's profile data, like high scores, or you can save the player's place as they progress through a level. The other example that the documentation gives is the replacement of player prefs. Player prefs is one of the first things that I learned to use in order to save data, but player prefs are only stored locally and persist as long as the player keeps the game installed. With the cloud saving of the cross-platform native plugin, the data will persist as long as the player keeps their same account, and the data will transfer across devices. In the setup section, the only thing it says that we need to do is enable cloud services in our essential kit settings. And so I'll go to Window, Voxel Buster, Native Plugin, Essential Kit, and Open Settings. Here you can see that I've already enabled Cloud Services, and if we expand it, you can see that there's two options. There's Synchronize on Load and Sync Interval. Usually you can leave these settings as default. Now in order to get Cloud Saving working properly on Android, there's one thing that we need to do inside the Game Services tab. And so I'm going to enable this service and expand it. We then need to go to our Google Play Console and then going to log in to my developer account. We then need to select the app we're working on and under Grow, Play Game Services, Setup Manager and Configuration, we'll select the project ID copy it, go back to Unity, and paste it into the Play Services application ID. Then if we want, we can either leave Game Services enabled or disable it because we only needed to set that value. In the iOS section, it explains that all we need to do is enable the iCloud compatibility for our app. It also provides a link to the iOS dev portal. And so I'll go ahead and log into my Apple developers account. So here I have my app selected. I'm going to scroll down to the iCloud compatibility. And I'll click the checkbox and then save. The Android section on setting up cloud services explains the steps that we need to take to configure cloud saving in our app. The first thing that we need to do is navigate to the Google Play Console and the documentation provides a link. From here I can then select the app that I'm working on and we need to scroll down to the Play Game Services section under Grow. Here we'll click on the Configuration option. We'll then click Edit Properties in the top right corner and here we need to set Saved Games to On. Now just be aware that once you enable this option you cannot disable it after publishing. And so I'm going to click Save Changes. Now in the Usage section of the documentation, it first talks about two different types of player data. There's a cloud copy and a local copy. Now the cloud copy is self-explanatory, it's the current data that's saved on the cloud. Whereas the local copy is the latest data that's been pulled from the cloud. And the most important thing to remember is that you want your local copy to always be as current as possible, especially before you update the cloud copy with the local copy. Now there will be times where you've pulled down a local copy, but then the cloud copy changes maybe from a different device that's logged into the same account. And so you want to make sure that you compare the cloud copy to the local copy and pick whichever copy is the most current. And we'll show you how to do all this, but first we need to create a new script. All right, so here in my Unity project, I have a new c -sharp script called ig underscore cloud saving, and we'll go ahead and open it up. Inside the script, the first thing that we need to do is add two namespaces up at the top. The first is using voxelbusters.essentialkit, and the second is using voxelbusters.core library. Next up, we need to scroll all the way down to the bottom of our script, where I've added a new class. 
This is a public class called IG underscore cloud data. This class is not inheriting from mono behavior because this class is only going to hold player data variables. And so inside this class, I have two example variables. The first is a public int called high score, and the second is a public bool called has remove ads. Now you can add more variables to this class. You could have a variable for each product in your store, but you should keep these variables simple and probably not get any more complex than a string. Now once you have this class created, we'll scroll back up to the top of our first class where I've added three variables. First is a singleton of our IG Cloud Saving class. So I have a public static IG cloud saving, and this is called instance. The second is an instance of our cloud data class. This is a public variable of type IG underscore cloud data, and I've called it my cloud data. And the third variable is a serialized field of type string called cloud data key. Now once you have these variables, we'll jump back over to the documentation. Inside the documentation, we can scroll down to the next section which is called import namespace, which we've already done. The next section is called register for events. And here we have three different events. The first is on user change. This event is triggered when there's a change in the underlying cloud account. The second is on save data change. This event is triggered when there's a change in the current cloud data you have access to and provides a reason behind the data change along with the changed keys. And the third and final event is on synchronize complete. This event is triggered in response to the synchronized function call. And so we're going to copy the on enable and on disable functions and then go back to our script. Here you can see I have them pasted in, after which we can go down to the start function. Inside the start function we want to initialize our instance variable. So I have instance equals this. Now one thing that you might want to do is make it so that the object the script is attached to does not get destroyed from scene to scene. To do this we would just type don't destroy on load and pass in game object. Then we would add this object to a splash screen scene that is only ever loaded once at the beginning of our game. From here we'll go back to the documentation, and the next section is on synchronizing. Here we have the synchronize function call, and we'll copy this line of code and go back to our script. And you can see that I've added this line of code to our start function, but I've added it to an if statement where I'm checking to see if cloud services.isAvailable equals true. Now this synchronize function call will trigger the onSynchronize complete event, and so we need to create this registered function. So we can go back to the documentation, and here we see the onSynchronize complete function. So we'll copy the segment of code, and I've pasted it in here. Now at this point, there's four different data types that we can read from the cloud, and the documentation explains what those are. The first is a bool, the second is a long, the third is a double, and the fourth is a string. And here in the documentation, it gives us examples on how to set and get those four data types. It even gives us an example on saving and reading dictionary values to the cloud. This requires converting the dictionary into a string value and then using the set string and get string functions. Now, in addition to the examples that are provided in the documentation, there's even a sixth option, which is similar to the dictionary example, but instead of using a dictionary, we're going to use a class. And that's why we created the IG cloud data class. And so first off, we'll create a public void function for saving our class. This function is called save cloud data. And this function requires two parameters. The first is of type string called key, and the second is our cloud data class called data. Inside this function, we're creating a local variable of type string called JSON, and I'm setting it equal to JSON utility dot two string, and we're passing in data. This will take our cloud data class and convert it into a JSON string and save it into our JSON variable. We can then use cloud service dot set string and pass in our key parameter and our JSON variable to save our cloud data class. We can then create the get function. This is a public function with the return type ig underscore cloud data. The function is called get cloud data and it requires a parameter of type string called key. Inside this function we have another local variable of type string called json and we're setting it equal to cloud services.get string and we're passing in our key parameter. We then need to return the JSON string in our cloud data class format. So I have return JSON utility dot from JSON and we have IG underscore cloud data in carrots and then we're passing in our JSON variable. Now one thing that you do need to be aware of are the limitations for JSON utility, which for the most part means that you need to keep your data class quite simple as I already mentioned. But for more information you can read up on its limitations. 
If you do create a complex data class, you do have the option of creating your own serializer and deserializer for these functions. But once you have these two functions created, you can initialize the myCloudData variable inside the onSynchronizeComplete function. So I have myCloudData equals getCloudData, and we're passing in the cloud data key variable. Now there's just two more things that we need to do for this script. The first is that we need to create the registered function for the on user change event. And so here I have a private void function called on user change. This function has two parameters. The first is of type cloud services user change result called result, and the second is an error called error. Inside this function, all we're doing is a debug.log where we're passing in result.user. Now the last thing that we need to do for this script is create the registered function for the onSaveDataChange event. So here I have a private void function called onSaveDataChange, and this function just has one parameter of type cloud services save data change result. Now it's inside this function that we need to handle any unexpected differences between our cloud copy and our local copy. And so first off we have a for loop with int i equals zero, i is less than result dot changed keys dot length i plus plus. Inside this for loop we have an if statement where we're checking result dot change keys on i equals cloud data key. If this is true then it means that our cloud copy has changed. And so inside this if statement the first thing that we want to do is create a local copy of our recently changed cloud data. And so I have a local variable of type ig cloud data called server copy and we're setting it equal to get cloud data and we're passing in cloud data key. Once we have our old local copy and our new local copy we can then go through each variable in our cloud data class and compare if there's a change, and if there is a change, then we want to overwrite our old copy with the new copy. And so I have an if statement for our high score variable, where I'm checking to see if server copy dot high score is greater than my cloud data dot high score. If it is, then I want to set my cloud data dot high score equal to server copy dot high score. I then have an if statement for our has remove adds variable. In this if statement, I'm checking to see if server copy dot has remove adds is true or my cloud data dot has remove adds is true. If either one of these is true, then we want to set my cloud data dot has remove adds equal to true. And after these if statements, we then want to overwrite our cloud data with our newly resolved version of the data. And so we have save cloud data and we're passing in cloud data key and my cloud data. Now one thing to note, if you add more variables to your cloud data class, then you'll need to have more if statements here to resolve all the conflicts in each variable. Now once you have the script created, you can go ahead and save it and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, I simply have an empty game object which I've named cloud saving and I've attached our IG cloud saving script to this object. You'll then need to set the cloud data key in the inspector and once you set this key and publish your game, you're going to want to make sure that you never change it. Otherwise, all the players will no longer be able to access the same cloud data. And as far as a naming convention, you might want to consider incorporating the name of your game and even company into the cloud data key. So mine could be Infogamer Campfire. Now this is all great for putting the system in place, but how do you use it in your game? It's actually quite simple and I'm going to demonstrate in our IG billing script. So here in our IG billing script, we have our reward purchase function. And here is where we are supposed to reward the player for purchasing the remove ads. Well, all we have to do is get access to the has remove ads variable in our cloud data class and set it equal to true. And then we need to push that change to the cloud. And so here in our reward purchase function, I'll type ig underscore cloud saving dot instance dot my cloud data dot has remove ads, and I'll set it equal to true. The next line of code will be something like ig cloud saving dot instance dot save cloud data. For the first parameter, we can pass in ig cloud saving dot instance dot cloud data key, and for the second parameter, we can pass in ig cloud saving dot instance dot my cloud data. And that's how you update and push your player data to the cloud. But now let's say you want to use the has remove ads variable to check if it's okay to play an ad or not. For this, I'll just create a demo function that I'll delete later called play ad. 
Inside this function, we would have an if statement where we'd check to see if ig underscore cloud saving dot instance dot my cloud data dot has remove adds. If this variable is true, we could then return, making it so that we don't continue on with the rest of this function. And after this if statement and return, if the player has not purchased remove adds, all you'd have to do is the API function call to display an add. And that's the basics on actually using the system in your game. As for testing, there's not much that I can show you or that we can do within the editor, but the testing section in the documentation goes over two scenarios that you'll want to test on both platforms. The first scenario is if your data persists after uninstalling and reinstalling your game. And the second scenario is for if your data can be synchronized while using two devices at the same time. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on using the cloud services of the cross-platform native plugins too. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos.